Hi, I'm Art Bergeron. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen this show before, welcome to Frank and Mary in Hudson. The point of this show uh, is really um, to talk about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations at the uh, Hudson Senior Center, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. So the question is, if you identify with that, what are the, who are the people you need to know? What are the programs you need to know about in order to basically stay in Hudson for the rest of your life? So I was speaking to my good friend, Janice Long, who always recommends these great guests for me to, to have on. And he, she talked about Brian Stearns, who has been working uh, as the veterans agent for, in Hudson for some, for some time now. Uh, to talk about a variety of programs. Obviously, he's dealing with issues across the board, dealing with all veterans. So I wanted to talk about any of those programs that would be relevant, especially to folks who are older. So, so, so Brian, thank you very much for coming on. Thank um, you. Good afternoon, sir. It sounds like any any friend of any friend of Janice's is a friend of mine, right? The Janice yeah, absolutely. Is just, she's an unbelievable resource. Um, and and so, could you just kind of talk a little bit first about kind of how you ended up? being involved in Hudson and how long you've been doing this. And then just, and, and then, you know, talk about what you think are the programs that would be of most concern to my friends, Frank and Mary. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Mr. Bergeron. I appreciate the opportunity to speak uh, about all of our veterans. Uh, I've been doing this for about 18 years in Hudson. So uh, I've, I've seen quite a few things uh, come across my desk as far as uh, benefits uh, needed by uh, older veterans, all veterans actually. So, so you probably uh, start. You're going to start needing my services pretty soon. You're getting. I, I am. You're getting, you're getting am. to look like Frank and Mary. That's, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, so, the, uh, the the whole uh, purpose of our veterans program in Hudson and and the other uh, surrounding communities uh, or throughout the entire Commonwealth uh, is uh, based on the veteran service and uh, veterans honorable service uh, should be should be considered, you know, uh, one of the top priorities of uh, moving forward after they get out of the service. Right. Uh, Massachusetts right. is a leader in uh, veteran services. Uh, we have a Department of Veteran Services in Boston that uh, we rely on to uh, get, get the benefits that we need for the uh, towns that uh, we serve. Uh, I also serve the town of Southboro and Berlin and Bolton. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's a busy office. Uh, we have uh, many programs. One of the the biggest programs that we run, and the reason why we're here, is uh, the Chapter 115 program. Mm -hmm. That's general legislation. Chapter 115 uh, is based on income and assets, and uh, it allows uh, veterans, their spouses, widows, widowers, uh, to apply for additional assistance if they're below uh, the 200% poverty level. So that's uh, one of the biggest programs. It allows us to uh, provide them with services, uh, financial services, uh, housing services, uh, fuel assistance, things of that nature, so that they don't have to live in and uh, wonder how they're going to pay that that fuel bill or wonder if they're going to have enough at the end of the month. And, uh, and can you can you give folks a sense of and once again I'm not trying to put you on the spot of, no. of kind of what those numbers might look like. So if you were say you're Frank and Mary and say Frank was a veteran, right? Correct. So you're a fan and the kids are grown up. So you're a family of two yep. and you're living in your house, you know, and you want to keep living there. Uh, and you, you know, you're, you've got a house, so your house is worth, you know, something, right. It's, a, sure. it's in Hudson, right. Fabulous sure. Hudson, which is like, you know, everybody <laughs> wants to live in Hudson now. So the Hudson, say the value is, you know, $300,000, $400,000 and their income is, is social security, basically, you know, say Frank's, Frank's getting a, ch a check and Mary's getting half of his, you know, can you just kind of talk, just kind of talk about how, how they, these folks would think about whether they'd be eligible for anything, uh, and if so, what they might be eligible for? Would that be okay? Sure, that'd be great. Uh, the 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 biggest thing is uh, people aren't aware, and uh, programs like yours make people aware. Uh, our veteran community sometimes isn't aware because uh, they they just don't realize that uh, the benefits out there. So uh, through programs like your own and Janice uh, at the senior centers and Shine counselors and things like that, it, it allows us to uh, bring that to the forefront for uh, their needs. So if you've got Mank, uh, Mary and Frank and Mary and they're living in their home on social security only, then uh, they should seek out the veterans officer in that town mm -hmm. that they live in Hudson, Berlin or any town in the Commonwealth. 
It doesn't carry over to other states, so it is just basically in uh, the state of Massachusetts. So, uh, so if they're a married couple and their income is, uh, hang on one second, please. Uh, under, uh, let me see, just change the numbers. So if they're a married couple, their income has to be under $2,900 per month. Under $2,900 per month. Per month. Right, which would actually be right, right about which, where a lot of my clients are. So, you know, your typical, your typical Frank check for, for Social Security right now is about $2,000 a month. Your typical Mary check is about, therefore, half of about, about 1000 so just I mean, a little bit below that, that work, huh? right? Just a little, little bit below below that, and 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 they should be inter they'd be interested. They should be interested in talking to you about benefits. Sure, right? and 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 so that's a lot of people. And, so, and if and if Mary and if Frank is dead and Mary is a widow, can she still be talking to you? Absolutely. Uh, okay. She should more than uh, she definitely should be talking to us. Okay. The one of the biggest things is a lot of people don't realize is they may qualify under different budgets. So uh, if it's a married couple, a single person, or if it's a, a widow, uh, or even a transitional or medical only, and I'll get into medical only in a minute, but uh, the, the, the thing about uh, the benefits is we provide a monthly ordinary benefit allowance, mm -hmm. a fuel allowance, reimbursements on uh, prescriptions and co-pays for doctors, and uh, things of that nature. And, and, this, and, this, and, the, and those reimbursements would even be for, co for for things that are outside of the VA system. So the, these are right these are reimbursement right. for for folks you know on the private on the private side, especially outside because in the VA system the VA is uh, strictly limited to uh, the veteran unless the veteran died of 100% disability and then uh, Champ VA may kick in for the widow, I but uh, those are all uh, different categories that'll take a lot more time to talk about. But, but the one thing uh, that I see a lot are medical onlys. So they exceed the allowance that what we just discussed. And the yep. asset limit is uh, $16,600. Uh, so they, can have, they have to have less than $16,600 in liquefiable assets. It does not include nice. home, doesn't include car, uh, things like that. So if they're under $16,000 basically in the bank and IRAs and things like that, then they yep. would also qualify. Yeah. So, so now I'm going to ask you that I'm going to ask you the standard, mm -hmm. uh, my elder Frank and Mary Mass Health related question. So, sure. if they have that amount of assets and they give them away, is there a look back period? There is. It's a five year look back period. I see. Okay. And uh, you know, it has to. You know, what we suggest is if they need things, then they should get things. They yeah. should prepay for their burial. They yeah. should. Uh, they should do some uh, pre planning uh, for for their assets, and that won't count against them. You know, we don't, we're not talking about going out and buying a, uh, you know, a hot tub or anything, but we're, uh, we're talking about actually uh, paying for things that uh, they see as a necessity that would uh, help them down the road. I see. Uh, medical only, again, uh, like I say, uh, you may have more than that $2,900 a month coming in, but you still may qualify under the 200% poverty level. What that means is, uh, so... Frank and Mary both have Medicare taken out of their Social Security, yeah. $170 a month. We can reimburse that under medical only. They have uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield or Harvard Pilgrim Health as a Medigap plan, paying the 20% that Medicare does not pay. Yeah. We can reimburse that. Uh, we can reimburse Medicare D, anything uh, that's taken out from Medicare D, uh, if they have a supplemental plan or if it's taken out from Social Security. I see that. That's big. That's huge. Yeah, you, you're talking uh, some Medicaid, Medigap plans can be uh, $600 for a couple. Right. And that's keeping them in their home, like you discussed at the beginning. If we want to, we want to keep them in their homes. They don't want to leave. They they built a a life here. So uh, and and a lot of them are reluctant of asking money for uh, assistance from their children or friends because you know you know it's a pride thing. Right. So. Right. But no, Medicare that, only that, is, uh, or Medigap or the medic, medical only program is one of the biggest things that uh, we do. And, and can you talk about what, so what are the what are the income or asset criteria regarding the medical only program? Yeah. So, uh, again, it has to be within the 200 percent poverty level. Yeah. So if they if they fall within that 200 percent poverty level, then uh, they're eligible 
Uh, and, and again, that's that's that twenty nine hundred dollars a month. Yeah. If they're over that, they may have a spend down. I so see. say say they're getting twenty nine hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Or and say, or say income, in Frank and Mary's case that they're getting three thousand dollars a month. That's sure. kind of my standard. Frank and Mary. Frank's right. got two thousand a month. Mary's getting a thousand a month. Right. Yeah. So uh, they're getting three thousand dollars a month, and uh, the actual limit is, under two hundred percent poverty is twenty nine hundred. Yeah. So they would have a spend down of $100 a month, which, oh, means, which means uh, if, if they're on a medical only budget, and that's that's a budget that's uh, that comes out from the state, it's not individually towns or anything like that, that's provided by the state annually in July, uh, they would have a spend down of $100. And that would be taken out of one of them reimbursements. So they're getting $700 or $600 a, a month on reimbursements for medical Medicare D, Medicare B, uh, Medigap. You take the hundred dollars away. Now they're getting five hundred dollars. Wow, that's a that's a huge. It is huge. And for the medical only, are the, do those asset criteria still apply? For excuse me, I, I for, the, for the medical only benefit, are they still constrained by the asset criteria in terms of they how are. much they can have in the bank? Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so uh, that's the Chapter 115 program, but it's very uh, intricate. It's very uh, detailed. Uh, it's not something that a person can do on their own. They have to do it through a VSO, such as myself. Uh, they have to do it through the office, and we have to actually gather all their information, their tax information, their uh, Social Security statements, three months of bank statements, uh, things of that nature, their, their homeowners and policies and things like that. And by, and by the way, I, I tell all my, my Frank, the Franks and Marys of this world, don't try to do these forms by yourself. Oh, I mean, on. because, and, and, and don't try, don't say no to yourself. Don't correct. You kind of hear about this program. Don't, don't, if you're thinking about this program, the best advice you could get is probably not at the Dunkin' Donuts from your friend while you haven't caught, right? And that happens quite often. Uh, oh, yeah, a lot. A lot of a lot of a lot of advice of various qualities gets given out of the Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so you really just want to talk to um, you, you want you want to give Brian Stearns a you know a call because he's going to kind of help you kind of figure out all that stuff, right? That's right. And if if you're not in my jurisdiction, say you're in Marlboro or uh, one of the other towns, then I can direct you to that town's VSO and they can sit down with you and go over that the same things that we're talking about today. I get it. I get it. And those benefits would apply even if I haven't been in Mass. If I become a resident of Massachusetts, then it, then it's all about the Massachusetts benefit. Correct. Uh, my my son, my son, who was a, who was in the army and went to Afghanistan actually twice, is in Colorado. Oh, thank you very much for that. If, if he ever came back, <laughs> right, he yeah. he would be able to he'd be able to talk to you about these kinds of benefits, even though he's been in Colorado for a while. Yeah, long. and that's just the Chapter One Fifteen benefits. A, a a young person that's coming out of the military that has no income. Uh, has no retirement, has no disability or anything like that, uh, that's in transition, uh, they should talk to a VSO as well, because there are benefits out there to help them, not only with the Chapter 115 program, but uh, with any possible disability benefits that they may, uh, disability injuries or uh, illnesses that they incurred while in service, that they may not even know about. Uh, things like uh, asthma are now uh, compensable by the VA. And it's a presumptive uh, illness resulting from uh, burn pits and uh, toxic exposures over in Afghanistan and even uh, the first Gulf, Gulf War from the oil fires. So a lot of people may have uh, illnesses and they can't explain them, but they don't have to explain them if they were in an area of responsibility, such as uh, Afghanistan or, or Saudi Arabia. So. And that's and that's a and that's a huge thing. That's one of the other things that we do and we do real well is uh, we we try to uh, gather the information from individuals, including their medical information, to uh, set up a claim for a disability. Yeah. Yeah. And there's all types of disabilities. They're not just mental health disabilities. There's physical disabilities. There's uh, uh, disabilities that uh, are secondary to a primary disability. So if somebody injured their back and now they're having hip problems later in life, uh, they may have arthritis as a result of that back injury. So a secondary injury is also considered a primary injury as far as payment goes in compensation. Right. And compensation ranges anywhere from 0% to 100%, unlike social security. Social security is you're either disabled or you're not disabled. Right. VA disability for the veteran 
is either 0% all the way up to 100% in 10% increments. And that can change over time, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So a person that has a, a 10% uh, back injury uh, and, and it gets worse over time and it's documented over time, then uh, they should consider reopening the claim based on new information. So because there may be a whole lot of folks out there who have are getting a, a, a check based on some level of disability right now. But now they're my folks. Right. So they're getting old and, and you know, and now and now it's acting up. So, right. this, so this may be a real time where they would want to revisit that once again by talking to you about it. Right. And there's no moratorium on claims. Uh, you can claim uh, a disability at any time and uh, based on what you believe is caused by service. Right. And once again, don't say no to yourself. No. Don't say no, no to yourself. Let the government say, say no. Because you remember it, you know, and once again, this isn't charity. This is, you're a veteran. Absolutely right? not. You right. paid your dues, right? This is a big deal. This is just, this is just a big deal. Now, can, can you, can, now, now I, I realize that the, that the aid and attendance benefit is kind of more of a national benefit, tends to not be dealt with at the state or the local level, but can you talk to that? Can you speak to that sure, one at all? Absolutely. Uh, I think that's that, and once again, that's one I run into a lot because I have so many folks who either are are really homebound and really need care at home, or are 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 heading to assisted living in, increasingly. You know, because they really can't right. get managed at home. So if you could talk about that a, a little bit, I'd really appreciate sure, it. Sure, absolutely. Uh, aid and attendance. It's a pension program. It's not a compensation program. So uh, we're looking at a, a totally different VA program. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that is for people that that need assistance uh, in their home or uh, in nursing home care. Or it, it's a benefit that's earned. And I'll get back to what you were saying earlier. Uh, these are not give handouts. These these are these are helping people that served and earned these benefits. Right. And people have fought uh, Congress and uh, they fought all the way up to the hill to make sure that these benefits are provided for our veterans. We provide these veterans benefits because they provide their service to our country. But aid and attendance is, is, is a little more unique. It's, uh, it's a little harder to attain. It's a pension program, and uh, there's several different documents that you have to go through, uh, income documents primarily, uh, how much you spend out, how much your income is coming in. It's just a, a basic uh, tally sheet or, or income statement showing that, you know, here's my income, here's my expenses, and, uh, you know, to see if they qualify. And uh, they can qualify if they're in nursing home care. They can qualify if they're in home. Uh, and the income comes to them, and they can pay for in-home care with that extra income. And again, it can keep you in your home, like you said at the beginning of the show or the program. Uh, we want to keep people in their home. There, there are available uh, avenues to go down. And anybody that has any type of uh, uh, issue with uh, in-home care that they need additional funds to help pay for that care, that's what aid and attendance is supposed to do. You need the regular aid and or attendance or assistance of another person for your daily living. Right, and I, and I really wanna, I really wanna you know, encourage people once again to be thinking about this program and don't say no to yourself and don't you know, rely on information that you heard about. Because the, the interesting thing about the aid and attendance program is that while its point in theory, is to subsidize your income up to a particular level, which I think for the veteran now is a little over $2,000 per month. Mm -hmm. um, don't assume that because you're making, like in the Frank and Mary case, if you're making $2,000 a month, you know, or Frank and Mary are making $3,000 and all, that therefore you don't qualify. Because for, for the purposes of that benefit, when you're figuring out your income, you subtract your medical expenses. Correct. So if you've got big medical expenses, and, and the, the case that I always use is the folks that are in an assisted living community where you've got an expense. If, if it's a documented that you need to be in that community because they're providing the kinds of things you need in order to maintain your life, then the assisted living bill can get included as a medical expense. Absolutely. And as, as a result, you end up with income that is like less than zero, right? Once you figure out what you're told, and typically that's and by the way, that's typically the case for folks who are in an assisted living, right? They're basically using their savings or to pay down the assisted living be, because they don't have the income to pay for the assisted living. That's right. And, 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 and the big thing about that is that income that they've saved all them years goes fast. Right. And uh, just because you have $100,000 in the bank, that doesn't prevent you from qualifying for aid and attendance. 
which is, uh, I believe, $147,000 in assets right now. Right. So if you're under that amount, try to qualify early because that income is going to go down. It takes a, f a few months, uh, to, a few to several months to actually uh, be approved. Right. So right. Uh, and it doesn't happen overnight. It, it takes time. And in, the, in that time that it takes to qualify, you're spending down that $100,000 to zero. <laughs> right. Eventually. Right. And, 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 and you're just trying. And once again, if you're at home, you know, I realize you're at home and you've got these big expenses that can, you know, that can be a big help. Once again, don't assume, don't say no to yourself because, you know, for example, I've had people in that kind of situation where they've got a home, home you know, typically has no mortgage on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And they, they really want to stay at home. And what I suggest to people is so go get a reverse mortgage, you know, so go get a way that you could tap for money out of your home because pulling money off of that reverse mortgage is not income. And therefore it doesn't like, it doesn't, it doesn't affect the amount that, it, that the aid and attendance benefit may be giving you. Right. And that's and a great point. You with this extra source of money, you know, and that's a great point you make because uh, getting back to the chapter 115 uh, reverse, reverse mortgage doesn't count against that either. So that's right, income, right. but it's uh, it's based on your home and right. your home is allowed. So uh, what you say is a hundred percent correct. There, there's no time to wait. Uh, don't question yourself. Uh, allow us to allow us to uh, actually figure it out to see if we can uh, we can do something. So can can you tell me, you know, based on your experience, is there a kind of a typical person who is who is a senior who is talking to you right now or who kind of walks in to talk to you? And, and, and do you have a sense of about what percentage of the veterans in in Hudson, for example, are taking advantage of this? You have actually met you, right? Yeah, um, we have about 2,000 veterans in Hudson. Yeah. And I have touched base with pretty much all of them. Oh, over that's the years. great. Uh, we, we, not everybody qualifies, not everybody's a veteran. They may think they're a veteran. So uh, again, we vet every person that comes into our office. And uh, over the years, you get to know your community and you should. You should know your community. Larger communities, uh, cities, uh, it's not as possible. But small towns, uh, we should know who, who our veterans are. And they come in, and uh, I can have four people in one day. I can have 12 people in one day. Right. And some days I have zero people. <laughs> so uh, outreach is important to us. Uh, we, we make sure that uh, we try to get the information out there. But uh, programs like yours help us uh, tremendously to do that. And, how, and how, how do you... How do you know how many veterans are in the community? Is there a, is there a database somehow that like, that the VA does? Uh, the, the town local census. You can find oh, out I how see. many uh, veterans. Uh, I get it from my, my town clerk. Uh, she will send it to me every year. I see. Uh, after, uh, after the election and everything or after uh, the end of the year. Yep. And she'll send me a, a list of how many veterans. And uh, I'll ask for the names and... I have uh, all the information. I have access to that. It's a privileged list, of course. That's great. No, no and it's great that you, that you do that kind of outreach because I had I had no idea. That I, I've I've I I had thought that the veterans agents typically saw a very small or kind of knew of a very small percentage of the veterans. But wow, to to be actually really trying to connect with this really large pool of people, because then you're see because then you're helping them because you know that they're get you know. As you say, you get to know them. It's kind of like a doctor. You know, you kind of get to know them as they get older, and you can kind of be taught, you know, adjusting things accordingly as their lives change. Yeah, and uh, I welcome any any veteran or widow to come in, and uh, our door is wide open. We we will uh, assist any and, and even if you don't think you're eligible, like you said, uh, that's not for you to determine. That's for you to seek out that information uh, right. through through your resources or my resources, and. Uh, you know, we're a great state. We're a great Commonwealth, and we have we have them uh, resources available. Not every state. And, and, and your and your existence is is a tribute to that, right? Because because Correct. you're there because the Commonwealth, among other things, is providing money to have veterans agents. You know, to have, right? That's like a big deal. So so if you could if you could you know connect with with uh, the folks with Sarah McCool, the, our one my wonderful friend here at at uh, at uh, at uh, Hudson TV. 
uh, so that she can, you know, put on you know, on the on a banner or something your contact information, your email, and your phone. Sure, number, right? absolutely. That'd be and great. Can you, can you give us your phone number and and tell it? And and do you have a regular Hudson schedule to, to hours that you're typically in Hudson? Because you're you're yeah. at, you're a busy guy, right? I'm not in Hudson. Uh, well, my hours in Hudson are uh, Monday through Friday. Yeah. Uh, typically, uh, anywhere from seven to three, eight to four nine to five it, it varies because uh i also do a, a a ride share program that allows veterans to go to their appointments at no cost to them i see so uh we have uh received a grant from a company in town and they provide a vehicle and we can get veterans to their their appointments uh throughout throughout the state uh and no cost to them so uh i may or may not be in the office those hours but those are typically my hours in hudson I get uh, it. i'm in southboro on Monday evenings, and I'm in Berlin and Bolton on Tuesday through Thursday evenings, and that's about it, I think. And then you sleep, and then you sleep. So, <laughs> so, so tell me, so tell us, what is your phone it's number? It's an application, true. It's right. a true so, application. So. so for folks who are trying to reach you in Hudson, what is your best number? Yes, 978-568-9635. That's now, right. that number goes to my, my phone, but it also goes to my cell phone and leave a message i'll get the message and i i try to recall return calls within 24 hours that's great well brian thank you so much for taking this time i really appreciate it and once again this is really the point of this show right is to be really having people kind of connect it you know a, you know like a name to a face right because sure. oh, they're kind of like no oh, i don't want to deal with this big bureaucracy they can say to themselves well he <laughs> looks like a friendly guy you know i can, I can talk to brian so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. No, I thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, being able to, you know, uh, get get our message out. Uh, your show's great. Uh, I, I I I do certainly appreciate any 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 information that you can put out there on our behalf. So That's thank good. you. And, and folks, so this is a friendly guy. So talk to him. You know, <laughs> and and by the way, you know, in general, people would always prefer that you talk to him before there's an emergency, so that you can right. have a sense of kind of what you know the issues might be. Great point. Even if you don't have a problem right now, just go talk to him. He's he's been here forever. It sounds like he's <laughs> gonna stay forever, right? And that way, if there's an issue, you can know you can talk to him. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you, um, Brian. Thanks to the folks at Hudson Cable, and and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. <laughs>